Hello, hello friends, Deborah Darby here. Welcome back to another theme deck corner. Today we have Laser Focus. We're going to be seeing how the Necrozma theme deck from Unified Minds play, plays out on the theme deck ladder. And we're going to get started in just a one moment. <laughs> So, in this deck, we have Necrozma, the basic psychic type with 130 HP, barrier attack, which does 30 damage and prevents 30 less prevents 30 damage in the following turn. Um, and then special laser does 100 damage, does an extra 60 damage if you have a special energy attack. So, this deck is kind of based around that. We have two of these guys as our main attackers. We have two weakness guard energies that really only go on your Necrozma. Uh, so he can attack for more damage. 18 Psychic, which is a crazy amount of Psychic energy. And you have your Psychic Recharger in Malamar, which makes this deck very strong. A basic attacker, stage 1 support. Just makes it so much faster than other theme decks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so with Psychic Recharge, once during your turn you may attach a Psychic Energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. This guy's been out since Forbidden Light, and it has been a deck that's worth playing ever since then. It always has a new rendition, whether it's like Stage 1 attackers like Necrozma here, or like it had Necrozma GX, has a bunch of GX attackers that attack with it. Now it's pairing well with tag teams, pairing well with all, like, all sorts of things. It's, just, it's a strong card. So if you do end up getting this theme deck, you can kind of play Malamar for the foreseeable future if you really want to. One of the strongest starts in this game is Mess Spirit. has that first contact. Search your deck for up to three basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Now this is not necessarily strong in the standard format, but it is very strong in theme deck format. It's kind of a really good starter mon. And if you can't fall onto a Mess Spirit, you always have your Tauros as a backup because he can always call his family and you know, just like have the herd come in pull in whatever pokemon you are looking for but only one only one unfortunately and then berserker attack tackle first berserker tackle for 60 damage is a very good two energy attack 60 damage is kind of high can you know can knock out things easily that are like basics that just haven't evolved yet um you also have uh gumshoes as a secondary attacker with alert headbutt which will always do 90 damage in this format. There's no big Pokemon GX or EXs, so this base damage is never 30. But this is where you'll see Gumshoes shine, because you really won't see him shine in standard format with all the big tag team GXs. You have your poor man Jirachi, as I like to call Aldino, with the hearing, you know, just putting their ear to the ground, listening to see if you can draw another card to see, just extend your hand just that much further to be able to continue the game and uh, get the pieces you need to win it. And then your third attacker has got to be Silvalli, that Ultra Beast anti-dude himself with Avenging Heart does 50 more damage for each prize card your opponent took their last turn. Now that can rack up really quickly, you know, if your opponent just took out a tag team, that's 180 damage for two energies. Granted, you're not going to get that with him uh, because you don't have any big tag teams. You're going to get, like, an 80 damage randomly. And then Air Slash, you have for 120 damage is a base, 120. A lot of things have 120 HP, so it's really easy for Savali to just kind of keep swinging, discarding an energy, and taking knockouts for you. So you end up attacking with Necrozma and Savali at most with a backup in gun shoes. And then, last but not least, the Dene return. You may draw a card and so you have six cards in your hand. So if you just are out of cards in your hand, you can the Dene draw a bunch of cards and if you have u-turn board it can retreat for free or you can retreat for that one energy that you just put on it to return um for uh trainer cards you have one of the strongest search cards which is mysterious treasure you search for any psychic type or dragon type you have no dragon types however you can still search for your malamar line your mesphere your necrozma any of those a switch just simply if you get something stuck in the active you got bug catcher which is a new draw supporter from unified minds um, not the best, but definitely a good budget option. You have two Cynthia, two Lily, which is kind of standard in uh, draw engines. If you want any deck to just kind of see how the consistency runs, usually put four Cynthia, four Lilies in it. Granted, that is not always the case with all the other draw supporters that are out nowadays. How is just kind of a filler card here. 
draw three cards. Strong in theme deck format, but if you move it on to expand the cards or expand into a standard deck, how is probably going to be one of your first cuts. Uh, we have Pokemon Fan Club, draw, grabs you two basics, put it, it puts it into your hand. Now this is great for those ones that you that have abilities that are play in your hand and it does abilities. Um, otherwise, it's it's good just to get your cards so you can get them down. A Titan Lies is also a good switch option or a dr shuffle draw like Cynthia. So it's kind of a, a mix between switch and Cynthia, a little weaker. Um, then you have U-Turn Board, a very strong tool card which allows you to retreat for free or for one less I should say. I'm saying free because the people you're going to attach it to is Ondino, Tauros, Gnaw, Young Goose, Gumshoes, the Dene. Like anything with one retreat cost, you're gonna attach a U-turn board because U-turn board returns to your hand if it's discarded from play. So phenomenal. If they had a field blower, got rid of it, U-turn returned to your hand. So it's a really good card that just keeps returning to your hand. I'm a little surprised that they threw weakness guard in here instead of recycle because they advertise it as recycle energy in like all of the big things all like the elite trainer boxes and stuff but weakness guard is the better energy for an across because there is so many psychic types running around especially in theme deck format it can literally wall a mirror match or it can uh stop like the mewtwo deck as well from just knocking you out turn after turn so and there we have it the 18 psychic energies that is our laser focus deck we're gonna go ahead and take it to the ladder and see how well it can perform against these other theme decks so let's get out of uh, soaring storm we gotta scroll on over here and get some laser focus we gotta get ready here oh and i do want to mention if you guys are loving the music it is from glitch city so go ahead and go over to her channel and check her out if you guys are interested. I will be providing a link in the description for the music so you guys can um, just follow that link. Oof, interesting. Um, I don't know if I want to start. I guess I start type Gnaw. Nah, we'll start Gumshoes. We'll start by putting some gum down on our shoes. We'll put Type Doll and Necrozma on the bench. So we did miss, we just completely missed our starter mon here. But we will go ahead and toss these guys down. I guess we U turn board the Young Goose. That way we just always have a free retreat. And then um, we can Tate and Liza to get a shuffle draw and see if we can find something. Ooh, turn one gum shoes. Nah, we're just gonna do this. Yeah, we'll do this. And pass. We're gonna try to put some pressure on Dragonite real fast here. Throw down a gum shoes and just start swinging. That 100 damage we're hoping can kind of get them, catch them off guard and uh, pedaling on the back feet. Alert headbutt. Oh, not 100 damage. 90 damage. Sorry. I misspoke. Pidgey's gonna collect. That doesn't look too bad for us. We can seem to get a fresh hand here. Although I might save Tate and Liza now. Because it's gonna be a good uh, switch option later. What is that? Lily. What? And we're just gonna alert headbutt. Um... I think our best bet in this specific matchup right now is going to be to just apply early pressure. We have no Inkays down on the board, and we really want some Inkays so that we can start using Psychic Recharge, um, as well as just get everything rolling. Until then, we just kind of want to put some pressure here, see if we can kind of go ahead in the prizes and kind of take away this game before they get up this Dragonite. Especially how I lost all my Dragonite matches was <laughs> was getting outpaced. Which this deck's good at, you know. You have a bunch of stage one attackers and a basic attacker. What is this? 
What are you doing, game? Give me that many psychic energies in a row. Don't know what's up with that. Wow, so many type nulls. I think I want to save this until I get, like, gaze down next turn. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can get ink gaze down next turn, and that'll help me a lot. I got no drawing, though. There's something else I want to throw down? No. There really isn't. I keep thinking about it, but there's not. There's nothing I really want to throw down. Plus, I do know from playing these these uh, theme decks that that the Dragonite does have a spread attacker. So the more people you have down, the more damage you can inflict off of those uh, off of that spread attacker. Are they ready? Are they ready for the big boy knight? No, no. They're just like, no, I'm good, I'm good. So you might have that a little bit with this deck. Um, if people can't beat it, they are not going to wait around for you to beat it to a pulp. Um, I was starting to take over that game, so yeah, they were just kind of done with it and saying, nope. That wasted four minutes of my time, let me try again. There we go, 50 coins. Let's play this again. I'm really low on the ladder. Win streak of one. Looks like we're placing Charizard. This is also considered a very good deck, especially if it gets set up. Okay, let's go first. That's really going to put a detriment to them as they have a stage two they have to set up, while we only have a stage one. Yikes, I don't like this. I guess I go type null. Because it can attack turn two. Toss this down. I hope I get like a basic something I can throw down so I can have like the least amount of cards in my hand. Nope. Um. Honestly, I'm gonna do like this. I'm just gonna burn that switch. So I can get a bigger draw. Definitely none of the cards I'm looking for though. I don't think I want Taurus down. If they knock him out, I can go into Necrozma. Yeah. I'm just gonna Necrozma swing for 160 as quickly as possible. In fact, next turn I'm probably gonna swing for 30. Ooh, double timer. They get double Charmeleons? The Dubla Charmeleons? I haven't seen an Inke yet in this match. <laughs> No Inke in like the the Malamar deck build. Oh yeah, so Kukui is something that they have. It really helps them out to get numbers. So sad all these cards are rotated. You can't use Nest Ball or Kukui in standard anymore. I think this one's still standard. Hmm, they decided not to attack. Uh, so I think I go ahead and throw this down. And Cynthia. That did not help much. Could do that, but then he can't retreat. Easily. We're gonna go ahead and retreat, and I think hit it. I will throw the Dene down. And I will hold off on that until I need him to be that. So we'll just hit it for 30 here. Um, at most, I can get a Charmeleon down this next turn. 
They are kind of slow to roll here um, until they get like a Nido Queen. But once they get Nido Queen, they are really unstoppable. Nido Queen is definitely their best attacker. If they can get it like set up. I think they already they already get the No, they got Charmeleon. Nice fan club for Ponyta. If they get the agility guy and it just goes off, um that's gonna just gonna kinda suck for us. But there's not much we can do about it. So I think we just attach a psychic and just attack here. Attack to our heart's content. Another U-turn board. We can probably throw that on our little Dedene boy. Let's go ahead and howl. For another Necrozma. I guess we're going to throw it down because we've not seen any Inkays. And we're just going to try to start taking names here. We'll get ahead in the game here. So I guess we're going to attach this weakness guard to this next Necrozma. And then manually attach to it. Ooh, do they have the knockout? Roaring Resolve? I think they do. That might have just like completely stopped us in our tracks. Getting one Charizard up, I think completely stopped us in our tracks. Because it does 130 perfectly. Yeah. Ouch. That hurt. Alright, so we'll put the Dene up here. We're gonna set up this. And we have more than six cards. That's what's kinda sucks about it. Throw this down. I guess that. And we'll draw two cards. I threw the energy on the wrong guy. Okay. Um. Let's keep the Dene and sacrifice my spirit. And then when they knock out something, we can hit for uh, 80 at least. But yeah, see, that's what's so strong about the Charizard deck is that it can just kind of set up and go after you. I think we have what one more game after this, though. If I can, if I can count correctly. Oh my God, Komala dabbing, hilarious. It totally would too. All right, cool. So now we can Avenging Heart, and I think it survives by one. Avenging Heart. Yeah, it survives by one, but R3. So we can actually Roaring Resolve one more time, right? Yeah, it could. It could be Roaring Resolve one more time. Take out the Savali. Yikes. Man, this charge art just showed me how easily it takes this deck. How easily it takes this deck. That seems loud. I could be wrong though. I think I do still have it set up where it's slightly slower. Yikes. Go and get him, Dedene. Watch this, Dedene MVP right here. Dedene is MVP right here. Boom. <laughs> yes. Audina. Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know. That might be able to help us with our consistency here. Um, luckily, even if they agility, it's not going to affect us too bad right now. I'm probably going to sit behind Audino until I can get an in game Malamar set up. 
So they're gonna go ahead and Brock's grip, bring back the Charizard and energy. And I think I'm just gonna have to expect an agility here. I'm really surprised I haven't gotten a new arena up. But it tends to be prized in these kind of decks. So they got tails. They hit for 60 and they got tails. I think I'm gonna do this. Use some hearing. That didn't help. Throw this special energy on that and we get one extra card when we Cynthia, so maybe we'll get lucky. Eh, maybe. A little bit of luck. Not the best, but a little bit of luck. Um, if we can get a Malamar, then we can attack with Gumshoes this next turn. Well, the following turn. They gotta take two turns to knock out Audino. Of course, we could actually retreat Audino and attack with the Dennis next turn to allow us to get more cards in our hand. It might be the best choice. They are so close to a Charizard again, but they should have had a Nido Queen by now. Tails, that's good to hear. That's good to know. Um, so we'll do this. Hearing. Tauros doesn't help us much. Retreat and draw another one. Yeah, draw until we had <laughs> six cards in our hand. I was like, I don't know if it's going to do very much for us with uh, five cards in our hand, but it is what it is. We still drew an extra card here. Man, they got that set up without Farfetch, too. Why would they Kikui? I'm just gonna Searing Flame, it knocks it out anyways. That felt like a bad play. Like, why Kikui there? Kikui doesn't help you out there at all. Like, it would've if I had, like, fresh health, but I didn't. Oh, cool. So they got the... the they missed the, um, the one thing. Uh, we want to hit a Malamar. Malamar. Nope, that's not a Malamar. Um... I guess I can attack with Necrozma. But then Charger's gonna come on and knock it out. I'm trying to think if there's an easy way to knock this thing out. It doesn't seem to be. I'm just gonna draw fan club. Not the best. I guess I grab these two. I think we, we let it take out Audino. Or try to. And then we just kind of start swinging with Necrozma. That seems to be... The only thing we can really do here. But that way we force this Rapidash to retreat. Maybe they throw up their Charizard or their Nidoqueen. Nope. Man, they've gotten so many tails. So many tails. Man, that's not helping. Uh, we'll let them take out this guy. Mm 
Really? Oh my goodness. All I need to do is hit that Malamar. Seriously, all I gotta do is hit that Malamar. I think it's less of a chance to hit it if I, uh, if I shuffle draw there. I think it's less of a chance to hit it if I shuffle draw. So unfortunately I'm not showing this deck up to its potential. But we did get to see a little bit of its potential before. Basically you set up Malamar right away. You special laser to not take knockouts, you know. We started to show it a little bit with the special laser. Oh my goodness, a card. It's not protected. Granted, they have like one knockout. They only need to knock out one thing. And uh, it's like too little, too late <laughs> for Malamar. Uh, we would just top deck the next Malamar. We would just top deck the next Malamar. Like way, way later. Top deck the next Malamar. I mean, I'm pretty definite that they have it regardless here. But like 130 is, is kind of the best HP I can throw up there to see if they miss it. But if they, they get one fire energy on Charizard, they got it. So I'm sure there's a bunch of misplays I had there. Probably being outplayed very easily, but uh, I mean, once they get the lead, it, it's really hard to come back. I think us getting up to three is pretty good. Um, copycat. Nice. Getting Malamar, like, I'm tempted to see what this is. Turn. I don't know, turn 10, maybe? Maybe turn 10? I don't know. That's that's really, that's a really slow Malamar. No matter where you go, that's a slow Malamar. Um, look at that. Cards drawn, 42 to get a Malamar. Malamar is the last card I got. It was 42 cards out of a 60 card deck to get a Malamar. And that's not Malamar, the Mysterious Treasures. Like anything, any way to search out Malamar, I did not find either. So we're gonna play one more game with this. See how laser focus can work. It is kind of still considered the top deck if played correctly. And it does teach you a lot about the, the game as a whole. You know, like you wanna get your, out your ability mon first and then your attackers. You wanna con continuously attack so that you can kind of keep the lead and take away the game. Yeah, we'll go first. Watch Blastoise pull the same stuff. Hmm, I'm tempted. I think we just automatically discard our Psychic Energy, grab an NK. So that's the way that, that Malamar decks play is Discard a Psychic Energy, grab an ink, okay? And then we Cynthia, see what we can play out of it, and then we, uh... We might not have to return, so we can get up to six cards again. We might just be able to, uh... Use the Cynthia and get what we need. Another one. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Get Inke down and slam it on the ground. We want a little baby ink boy. Um, I think it's all right to do that. Oh, we can throw an energy down. We'll throw it down on the Dene and Cynthia for a fresh hand of six. We find ourselves a Necrozma, that's good. And that U-turn board is nice as well. Now, if we have to, we could play Tauros, but I really don't want to. It's not a strong card. Um, all the time. 
can be useful as like a backup attacker for simple 60 damage for easy obtainable uh, cost. However, uh, I think unless there's like a 60 HP mon in the active, I'm not really going to try to play Tauros. Kukui. Kui Kui, Kui Kui. I don't have a tool. So tool, oh I do have a tool. So tool buster actually does a lot for me. Them. They could have taken that knockout. They really could have though. We're gonna put this down. We can definitely swing on that next turn. Um, I'm wondering if I want to... Now nah, we just gotta see what we can play. Yeah, we can get that Malamar down. And then voila, we have an attacker online. We have an attacker online, slick. Let me just return, get three more cards. Yes. All right, so they got how they got a Pidgeotto one line, so they can start kind of drawing through their deck with air mail. Um, Blastoise is almost there, but I do not see a gold duck yet. I still think they have to collect for another two turns to really get moving through their deck. Um, I could be wrong. Collecting. So I think they're hoping I stick with this guy, but I'm definitely not going to. We're just going to start swinging. Unfortunately, I don't have any energy to move around there. Could throw a Taurus down just so that extra card. But that extra card feels bad. Eh, we'll take it. Ah, we can get the next Sil Valley up and running. And we will definitely just air slash this one. Boom. Now we just have it set up where we can attach to the active and then uh, get an energy back to the bench. War Turtle, they are ready for the Blastoise action. All right, Power Squall, are they going to hit the 150? They do. Okay, so they're gonna do 30 damage himself. I gotta hit 130, which I can't quite hit. Hmm. Now I can do Avenging Heart for 80 and kind of take a two person knockout here without risking my main guy. Thirty. Alright, that might be an option too. Is actually to Attack with Aldina. I like this alternative, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, weakness guard energy. That way, drops it down to 60. Or drops it down to 100, I should say. But that Power Squad's getting a Golduck set up. So now he can kind of retreat with Blastoise and go after the Golduck. Or go after me with the Golduck, I should say. Which has 110 HP. It's kind of resetting me a little bit. Oh, he doesn't even have to sacrifice the energy there. 
Okay. Let's go ahead and psychic recharge here. I think we got to go in with Sylvalli here. I was like, can we get the Inke? We can. Guess I'm gonna throw away a Tauros. Yeah. Because I think I have uh, everything else I need. But this completely sets us up to be able to uh, attack with anything next turn. We're gonna lose our second self Valley though. We have plenty of energy in the uh, discard though. Let's go ahead and use this opportunity to hit for 80. And then it has 30 HP left. And we can take that out with uh, Necrozma and 2 energy if we need to. Sorry, let me look at this message a little bit. Oh, it's work. Okay. I don't know why I'm just getting it now, but I guess it is. So 30 HP, 100 HP, 90. They're pretty well set up here, though. They're actually drawing better than I am. But I like to think having two Malamars makes it where, like, anything can attack. A free retreater and two Malamars make you sit where anything can attack. There goes that. Does 30 damage to himself. And that allows for... Something with 70? Dang it. I gotta hit it with 70. And I don't have 70, I have 60. Hmm. I feel like I'm losing... I'm gonna lose real bad if I don't, like, attack with Necrozma soon. But I need to be able to take out both Blastoises. And I haven't lost my other energy yet, okay. So we just double Malamar, set up Necrozma. I guess I could've did it with the regular Psychic, actually. That way, it's one less item I have to look for the following turn. I think I set up him. He can take out majority of the most of the rest of the crew. And we special laser. It's one less Blastoise to worry about. I think maybe I'm just playing this deck wrong. I might be playing this deck a little too skittish. I like to wait until I have the knockout before I attack. And because I do that, um, I think I miss opportunities to try to get ahead in the game. But that shows that if, you know, if these things set up well, they can beat Necrozma. Again, I'm like 40 cards in before getting both of the uh, Malamars up. But I did have one right away, so. I was about to say, did they like just copycat me? So they can't take out Necrozma if Golduck's their only attacker. I guess I'm gonna try to do uh, Necrozma, Gumshoes, Necrozma as my final. Things getting beaten up. We lost Tisa Valleys and Aldino to get where we're at now. So we are pretty much up a creek right now on this thing. <laughs> Like we have to get the other Necrozma to take out the other Blastoise to try to win this. Um, and hope that they don't set up a third Blastoise off of a Brox. So this thing only has 30 HP left. 
which means I definitely don't feel like taking it out with that. Um, I feel like Psychic Recharging onto Young Goose here. Definitely, and taking it out that way. We'll retreat into the Young Goose. Touch an energy back to it. And use this little guy to take out a duck. Take out the duck with a Young Goose. Or a Goslin, as most people would call it. But that's not a Goslin, it's a Mongoose. <laughs> They should have the Blastoise here, which my response is Necrozma. If they do get a Blastoise and take out the youngest, we'll just blast them with Necrozma. So we have plenty of Psychic Energy and then we can kind of set up a secondary attacker with the double Malamar play that we have, whether it's Tauros or maybe something else. It's going to be kind of difficult to tell what we should really set up here. Ideally, we could draw Necrozma out of the last 18 cards. Necrozma weakness guard energy, but who knows if that's actually possible or not. And if they don't get the, um, yeah, if they don't get the Blastoise, then it would be really nice to run into, uh, although they one-shot us, don't they? Yeah. It was like waterfall one-shots us, never mind. <clears throat> I have used War Turtle though before to take out key knockouts because it's just a really strong card. What? They retreated into the duck? Into the duck? Oh man. That completely set me up to kind of take take the lead here. Definitely going to use Tauros finally. Take a knockout. Physically attach here and how? And how? And we even get the gumshoes. Berserk tackle. We'll take that knockout for that. That definitely puts us in the lead too. So see, Tauros can kind of punish those stage ones that aren't involved, which is what's really good about him. Um, other than that, I'm not really planning on using him too much. It just worked out, but he had to sit on the board for about 10 turns before that became a possibility. It also takes out Pidgeotos really well, but most people are not like me and will never put a Pidgeotto in the active. Like, I know that pretty factually. People will not put Pidgeotto in the active to get knocked out very much. Those are second Blastoise. Um, they're waiting until I attack with Necrozma to bring it out, though. But with two Malamars, I can kind of throw down a Necrozma, power it up, and attack. Unfortunately, he only does 90. So I might have to take this out with Necrozma itself. Ooh, I can take myself out. That's fun. That is definitely fun, being able to take yourself out and cause damage. So it definitely puts me in kind of a rough spot. Yeah, it's not worth the knockout. Definitely not worth the knockout. Um, how many energies do I have in here? One. So I could retreat and get one energy on each Malamar. I guess I do that. Doesn't 
doesn't feel necessarily smart to spread the energy out like this, but I think I have enough of it where it's not a big deal. Anything that goes down is pretty much going to have two energy on it, which allows me to kind of throw down an Akrasma and attack. Let me see if I can kind of prevent a knockout here and take one. Because then I just traded like two for one. Okay, cool, cool. So they're throwing him out. I can come in with Necrozma, take that out. They're all going to take out Necrozma with Golduck. And I can power up another Necrozma. And basically take out... I think everything's under 100 at this point. Oof, they hit nothing on the Squall. All right, this game, this this game is done. We lead Necrozma. We throw down another Necrozma. We throw those two energies from Gumshoes onto Necrozma. And I guess I throw a second energy on Malamine, actually. We go ahead and special laser. Special laser here with our focus. Get rid of a second Blastoise and go down to one prize card. They have to take out Necrozma. <coughs> and is that both Blastoises? No, they, they actually have another Blastoise. They were able to Brox Grit and put it back into their hand, I think. Well, their deck, which is now their hand. Yeah, so they brought back the other powerful Squall. I guess if they have energy in their deck, Squall right now is going to get it out. And they're going to take it. Um, oh, there you go. Brox Grit put all energy back so that they're guaranteed to hit the energy. Which means I wish we had a way to get through our last 12 cards. We're missing one card. That. And that's gotta be a hand attachment. So we have to find a way to get through our cards and take out as many as possible here. Um, 130 is all we have to hit. Granted, the only thing I can hit 130 is Necrozma. Uh, 150 takes out everything on our board. Tate and Liza. Um, I think we just have to play the Tate and Liza. I'll throw this down. I wish there was a way to, like, discard everything. <laughs> That's Tate and Liza. The odds on this are not high. It's literally RNG. And RNG chose them. RNG chose them. Not much we could do about that one. Um... Wait, we could survive. 150. Minus, yeah, we can survive. Let's try to be smarter than we look. We can barrier attack, take 30 less damage, which means that 150 is only going to hit for 120, leaving us... The 10 HP allowing us to special laser for 100 and taking the knockout for the game. Boom. Ah, they needed that. They needed that. They needed that Kakui to take that. Wow. 
I'll accept that loss. I'll accept that loss. They had to do so much damage to take us out. That was a pretty even match. I like that one. Uh, so that is the laser focus theme deck for you guys. Um, if you do want to add upon this, you can kind of uh, focus focus in on the uh, the special energy since there is more weakness guard energy. You could add more of those. That's really good with that. You really don't need 18 energy. You could probably get away with like 8 to 10. But for uh, special energy, unfortunately Necrozma is not a Ultra Beast, otherwise I'd say you could put Beast energy in there. Um, but like you have Memory energy, which does you nothing. Uh, recycle energy is a good one, as you can uh, it returns to your hand when it gets discarded. So you will always have it in your hand. Oh, I guess I have a reverse of that. So like that's pretty good. That's a lot of energy, but it is what it is. Triple colors will not work on it because it's a basic. And you could also try to do unit energy if you'd like. And then that way you could actually play some lightning and metal types. That could help out uh, quite a bit. For Pokemon, honestly, I would, uh, like, immediately you're, you're going to think to, like, thicken your line here. And that's, like, kind of a better way to get it out more so than the searching them out specifically. I didn't know I had a reverse of that. I knew I had three of these, though. And with that, you really won't need too many, like, of those, like, search and find attackers. Like, your stage one attackers are kind of actually going to get in your way. And I would turn the, the, the Denes and the Aldinos, I would almost just turn those into, uh, I don't know why I typed Aldino. You know. Where's my J? I would turn them into Jirachis. So you'd have four Jirachis, a Malamar line, um, some Necrozmas, which I don't think I have more of. I do have more of. That could be your main attacker. There's other good psychic attackers. If you go to just, you can filter psychic basic attackers. It's going to be the best way to, uh, to find them, you have things like Espeon Deoxys, which does more damage based off the amount of Psychic types you have on your bench. Latias, which protects you from Tag Team GXs. Um, uh, not that Giratina. The other Giratina, that one discards Special Energy, so it's good like in a mirror match. But you're really not going to run into it too often. This does hit for 130, but it is for 4 energy, so it's a little rougher to get up. Like I said, you have Necrozma. Mew, Mewtwo is good, but you really have to have the rest of the GXs to make it better. Um, you could use Muck, but it's not the strongest, but it would be good in a Mew, Mew box. Uh, Mew, this Mew, what's up, Llama? How you doing? Uh, prevents damage uh, done to your bench Pokemon. This one discards stadiums. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't suggest playing Mr. Mime, but teach their own. Uh, Sigalith has some kind of protection here. I've never really read Sigalith, but I know it's something that could be used in that fashion. You also have things like dragons, that some of them are really good with psychic uh, energy. And then you also have this, which allows you to have almost free retreat. It allows you. This thing can go in at any point and kind of reset something so that you can charge it up and then switch out. And then you also have Giratina Distortion Door. Does uh, one damage pings and uh, that helps you with your damage numbers. And then 130 is a really strong attack. You can kind of two-shot anything. 20 Pokemon is plenty. 
like I said, the other one that does have a lot, you can check out dragons and uh, normal types. The good thing about dragons, I'm going to say, uh, specifically this one, but uh, you can actually search them out with Mysterious Treasure as well, since that is going to be your main search engine in this deck anyways. But Photon, guys, if you throw a couple of metals in here, or like I said, that unit energy that allows you to use Photon Geyser and does 80 more damage times the amount of psychic energy you discard. So 80 is a big number for that. Um, I don't think you can use Rayquaza. I think one of these uh, Lottis you can use. I think it's... It's either one, I guess. If, uh, if you had... I think this is Dragon Evolutions, so you can't really use Latias too much. Latios too much, but Latias you could if you're playing basic dragons like Ultra Necrozma. I think Ultra Necrozma is the main dragon type you can utilize well with Malamar. If you want to play uh, Moo Moo Milk, you could use Miltank though. That's a funny card to use. Same thing with Eevee Snorlax. You can hit up those, uh, those evolution decks and just kind of crush them a little bit. You have this big boy, this big tag team, but it discards three for 240, which is a big number to hit, but it does come just shy of a lot of things. Ditto, you can kind of copy any attack that is colorless on your opponent's side, which is kind of nice. Um, you have the Giratina Garchomp, uh, which does, uh, if it has any damage counters on it, it does 80 more damage. So if you play like a Rainbow Energy, you, um, or like a shrine even you can get inner damage on this and it can attack for uh 240 damage on anything man i'm getting hoarse uh but yeah there's a lot of different things you can kind of peruse and try to figure out what you can use to attack with with uh malamar malamar is just a basic i can give you psychic energy so and the more malamars you have the higher attack cost you can afford but uh, with that, I think we're going to end off the YouTube thing here. Um, I think anything past this might be uh, expanded. Well, I guess anything after these normals. Anything after these normal types is going to be expanded. Well, I don't know. All these are useful, actually. Or can be used, I should say, not useful. But yeah, that's basically the uh, what I would do with the Malamar deck. Is you know you want to make it straight Malamar and kind of play around with what you like prefer prefer the best. If you prefer one prize attackers, maybe Giratina and Necrozma are your best bet. If you prefer GXs, maybe you throw a couple of Mew Mews in here and play with like a bunch of psychic attackers. Could be fun. Could be fun. Um, but I know first. For Necrozma specifically, you're going to want a special energy in there to unleash his full potential. Um, but we're going to jump over here. I want to thank everybody so much for stopping by the video today. This was another theme deck corner. Um, I don't think I have any theme deck corners coming up, but I might end up doing like the. I might be doing box or pack openings on the uh, on Twitch just so that it. I have like a designated time that I'm always filming something for YouTube. Um, but thank you. Love you guys so much for stopping by. And I just turned up my volume to jump scare me. Um, but this has been Dapper Drabby. This has been a theme deck corner of Laser Focus. And we will see you guys on the next video coming out soon. Bye-bye.